So earlier this year, I had intended to start doing quick project update videos every month to show you guys smaller projects that I had been doing, but maybe only showing on social media and then updates on bigger projects and also show you some things that other people within the community had been working on. That fell by the wayside pretty quickly just with how crazy everything's been this year. Uh, so it's been a while. It's time to fix that. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right in here. First up is a really small but oddly satisfying project that I did recently. As you can imagine from all the Minty Pie versions that I've worked on, I've got a lot of Altoids tins laying around. I modeled these trays for Altoid tins that hold cards of different types. I made versions for Nintendo Switch cartridges, SD and micro SD cards, and PlayStation Vita as well. Yeah, I know that one's pretty old at this point, but it's still one of my favorite handhelds. You just glue them down into a tin and that's it. I put models up on Patreon for supporters to download and print out, and then I've got these available on the shop as well. Part of the reason that I made these was for an upcoming Fusion 360 Crash Course video that I'm gonna be doing, uh, so keep an eye out for that soon, ish. I also posted models of my floating game cartridge display stands. Again, I have these in the shop, but if you're a Patreon supporter, you can download the model and print them out on your own. Next up, I'm still chipping away at the giant Game Boy project. Yeah, I know that project is taking forever to finish, but it's getting so close. This month, I've been working on a giant working cartridge. And one thing that I've started doing in various spots is carving out the finer details that wouldn't print very well on an FDM printer and doing those on a resin printer. It's been working really well so far. I also just finished the upper back quadrant of the body that that cartridge will go into. Honestly, I've been kind of avoiding that part just because of how much needed to be modeled in there, uh, but it's just about done. So you'll be seeing more and more updates on that in the coming weeks. I'm getting really close to being able to finally assemble all of that. Next, a quick Minty Pie update. A lot of people were sad to see version three retired because it had a slightly bigger screen and some nice features that the light version didn't have. The only reason we stopped offering it is the screen that we were using, uh, they stopped manufacturing it. Well, we think that we finally found a screen that will work as a replacement for that. We're still test fitting a few things and making sure that it goes together easily without damaging anything, but it's looking good so far. We've got a couple other changes in this version, like an updated power board that should be more reliable when you turn it off, and a feature that lots of you will be happy to hear about, L2 and R2 buttons, which now use resin printed button caps like you saw me use on the circuit shield build, so you don't have to trim down those silicone buttons anymore. We'll be doing pre-orders for that soon. You can follow Helder's Instagram for updates on that, and then I'll also be posting updates on my Instagram and Facebook as well. Helder's had a couple other projects launch, his retro PSU version three is available for purchase. I showed this in a previous video, but it wasn't out yet. Now it is. This is a really nice battery charging and boost board that can output up to six amps, which is crazy. That's what I'm gonna be using in the giant Game Boy project. Another cool item that he's added to his shop is a replacement battery for the Game Boy Advanced SP. It's a drop-in replacement, no modifications required, and it's 800 milliamp hours compared to the 600 milliamp hours of the stock battery. I ran a battery rundown test on an AGS 101 at full brightness running the Metroid Fusion demo loop, so this is about what you can expect under those conditions. And then he also recently launched kits for turning these old Burger King Game Boy Color toys into, well, actual Game Boys. Pretty awesome. The Raspberry Pi attaches to the board like you've seen in several projects by now, like the Minty Pi or the Circuit Gym, allowing it to play games from a ton of different systems. And if you're not into assembling these kinds of kits or you don't have the tools to do it, there's a member of the community named Liam who's selling pre-built ones. Really nice guy, so if you're interested in that, then check him out. He's actually working on and almost done with a build guide for that kit from Helder, uh, so keep an eye out for that soon. Next up is a project from Ampersand that I'm really excited about. That's a name that you might recognize from the Null 2 project that I showed off a while back. His new project is called the Espresso. It comes as a kit and it's an ESP32 based gaming handheld. That's a chip that you'd normally find in Arduino-like projects. In fact, I've done a few of those on my channel. But there have been a couple other handhelds based off of that chip, like the Pocket Sprite and the Retro ESP32. It's not as powerful as a Pi Zero, but it can still play games from systems like the NES, Game Boy and Game Boy Color, Sega Master System and Game Gear, and ColecoVision. I'll actually be doing a full video about this project next, so I'll leave it at that for now, but definitely check him out on Instagram, check his project out on Tindy, uh, and keep an eye out for that video soon. Last but not least is a project from Gamebox Systems. They're the guys who did the Cartboy project that I showed off last year. So first, a little backstory. Last year, they came out with a project called the DMG Consoleizer. 
That project lets you take an original Game Boy motherboard and replace the LCD and controller boards with a custom PCB that will give it VGA output and an NES controller input. It was a really cool project, and now they're back with another version called the GBHD Color. It'll do the same thing as the previous version, but this time with a Game Boy Color motherboard, and it'll give it HDMI output and a Super NES controller input. So again with this one, I'll be doing a full video all about this project before too long, so I'll leave it at that for now, but follow them on Instagram for more updates. Alright guys, well that's all I wanted to cover this time. I've got a couple other smaller projects that aren't quite ready to show off yet, uh, but I should probably finish these ones first anyway. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You'll see their names at the end of the video as usual. Uh, I know that times are tight right now for a lot of people, so I really do appreciate it guys. Thank you. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.